Big Mighty God did it again. You woke up on the right side of the dirt, so let's give God a praise. This is John Lakin and Friends. What's up, everybody? This is your boy, John Lakin, and welcome to John Lakin and Friends. Praise the Lord, everybody, and happy Sunday. We have an incredible show lined up for you today, and we are about to lift up this praise that says, Lord, I want you to help me. I said, Lord, 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 I need you to help me. I can't make it without you, Father, help me. I want you to help me on my way.
welcome to J.P. Holly Funeral Home and Crematory. We pride ourselves in assisting our community members during the greatest time of need for the last 100 plus years. In life, no two people are the same, so every funeral should be designed to help celebrate the uniqueness of one's life. That's where we at J.P. Holly Funeral Home come in. Our staff is committed to providing exceptional service and finding meaningful ways for your family to cherish the memories of your loved one. Today, I have the extreme honor and privilege of introducing my pastor, Pastor Charles B. Jackson Sr. from Brookland Baptist Church as he shares with us our motivational moment. Good morning. I'm filled with a great deal of excitement and Jesus' joy to be privileged to share with John Lincoln and friends this morning. When making a decision or facing a dilemma, to whom do you listen? Whoever has your ear, has your destiny. We make decisions based on the advice we receive from others. If we listen to the wrong person, we'll be given the wrong advice. If given the wrong advice, we will make the wrong decision. When we make the wrong decision, we end up at a place where God never intended for us to reside. Solomon says in the third chapter, Proverbs, verses five and six, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Let our awesome God be your primary consultant. When you consult with God first, then you are enabled a wisdom that comes from who he is and divine guidance, not only in making decisions, but in actions that are taken. Consult God. Let God your leader be. May the Lord bless you one and all. This has been Charles Bless Jackson Sr., Senior Pastor of the Brookland Baptist Church, West Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome back to John Lakin and Friends. And let me tell you, I am excited to have my big brother on the show and, and this, uh, uh, this future Hall of Famer on the show. I got the Jacksons in the house with me. Pastor Charles B. Jackson Jr. My and my boy Trey. I'm so proud to have y'all on the show. What's going on today? Not man. much. Not man, much, man. Oh, just, man. Just glad to be here, man. Let glad me tell you. So in this series that we're doing that I'm entitling Legacy in Ministry, uh, understanding that ministry goes beyond the four walls of the church, we have having conversations with PKs today. So what was it like growing up in Brookland Baptist all of these years as a, as a teenager, yeah. now developing into a senior pastor of your own church? Yeah. Like, what was that journey like for you? Man, it, it was very dynamic, I would say that. It was just, Come on. I was the typical PK. Okay. You know, you know what they say uh -huh. about they talk PKs. About us. <laughs> they say we're bad and <laughs> they say you know, but stayed in trouble, you know. Yeah. And basically everybody in the church was your parent some kind of way. Oh yeah. You know, and but it was, you know, like I said, it was it was very dynamic. A lot of varying factors that just contributed to my growing up, mm -hmm. to my to my rearing. And, you know, of course when I kind of got into my adolescent hood, it was more so mm -hmm. then trying to establish my own identity, mm -hmm. you know, my own name. You know, yeah. my, my father, you know, having having a very popular name. I Those guess, are some in shoes, Columbia, yeah. In West Columbia, greater Columbia area, you know, just kind of trying to be my own self. And find you know, your own lane. And trying I'm to sure. find my own lane, absolutely, man. And, you know, sometimes in an attempt to do that, you know, I, I, I made some mistakes, you know. I'm sure. I, I made yeah. a lot of ill-advised decisions, wow. you know, trying to establish my own name. I think one of the things that I really believe that, you know, we as African Americans are kind of, I think, I, 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 I want to say kind of cursed by, but not really cursed by, but I think it's a burden on us, mm -hmm. is, you know, we are like 
kind of inextricably tied to that God bless the child who has its own. Wow. You see what I'm saying? You're talking good. Yeah. And so it's it's almost like we 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 feel like our parents should not pave a path for us. Wow. They, they should not, you know, make a way for us to mm. follow in. Yeah. But if we don't do it ourselves, if we don't have our own wow. name, come on, we kind of feel like, you know, we were just riding the coattail of our parents. And so that's the only reason wow. we were successful. And I think sometimes that's a burden that we carry, particularly in the African-American community. Because wow. I see it in some other communities where, you know, the parents build the business for their children mm. to take over, you know, Easily. and to grow up in. And, you know, unfortunately, it's like we we feel like every generation should, should struggle and have the same issues, wow. the same problems that we might have. And I mean, that they might have. And, it, should, and it shouldn't be that way. You know what? Every generation ought to be a little better yeah, than, you know, the, than the one before it. So this is beautiful in and of itself yeah. for you to be in ministry, but be a present father. Yeah. So so just like I asked him, uh, your father, about growing up in Brooklyn, what has it been like for you growing up in your father's church as well as Brooklyn also? Well, you know, uh, New Law Street isn't as big as Brooklyn, so yeah. it's a limited amount of people that, that know you and, uh-huh. well, with Brooklyn, though. A whole lot of people know you too, but we're not over there all the time. So Yeah, I got you. Uh, like growing up for me, it was smooth. Like I didn't really, I didn't get in trouble a lot. Okay. I was just a good kid growing up. Uh-huh. I stayed focused on what on what I had in my mind and what I wanted to do. That's, that's how incredible. that's how I still live right now. Mm-hmm. Stay focused and uh you know, it was it was it was just smooth. I didn't have any any pressure growing up, you wow. know, playing basketball. I never felt any pressure because I'm a I'm just a cool Chill, yeah. dude. Now, that's incredible to, to me because to, you yeah. have always been a top prospect. Yeah. And so oftentimes when you're on top or when you are connected to a popular family, yeah. you know, there's a target on your back. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's uh, striving or trying, they automatically single you out. Yeah, I so, definitely I definitely have felt like the target on my back a lot of times, but I never really like, played into yeah, it. Yeah, I just never played, never played with it, never played into it. I just kept going and doing what I have to do to, to get to where I have to go. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and you know, John, I, I always kind of just tried to raise him with that, with that freedom, though. Wow. You know, and just kind of, you know, let him be his own man. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you're my son. You know, you're, you're, you're my dad's grandson. Mm-hmm. You know, but I just kind of just, I didn't try to shelter him, didn't wow. try to— Raise him as a preacher's kid. I got you. You know, because that can as be a, thing. a PK. Yeah, but just you know, give him you know, just give him that freedom to be a kid. You know, to wow. be an adolescent. You know, now to be a young adult, mm-hmm. and uh, you know where he didn't. I tried to relieve that pressure as much as possible for him. Yeah, I, and I, got I think you. when I, I was commemorate him. Yeah, for that too. Like yeah. uh, just giving me that freedom just to do. Do what I have to do and learn from different mistakes that I may have made throughout mm-hmm. life. It's, it's yeah. helped me get to where I'm at right now. I tried now. to help him learn from some of my mistakes. That too, and, and you as know well. what? <laughs> and, and because of us experience in life, mm-hmm. you know, you were able to use how you were brought up yeah. to decide how you wanted to bring your children up. I didn't want him to be me. I didn't want him to be his grand wow. his grandfather. That's powerful. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and my dad didn't really want me yeah. to be him either. But mm-hmm. like you said, it was a little different growing up yeah. at New Laurel Street more so and then growing up in Brooklyn yeah. mm-hmm. where everybody's looking at you like yes. you're supposed to be yeah. the next preacher. And mm-hmm. I think it also helped he had other bro- you know, yeah. he had other siblings. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, two other brothers too. Uh-huh. I was the only son. I got you. You know, mm-hmm. the, I, only, I, the only begotten. On, the only mm-hmm. be- of the father. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was like you got to preach from you know yes. from one year old. Now, you know, I, I and so I ran it. from that. You know, wow. I ran from that. Mm-hmm. Never really wanted to do mm-hmm. it. You know, so let's talk about but that. that. Yeah. Okay. When, when did the call of God get real to you? Uh, was, where you realized that this is not just something I'm doing. Because it's the family business, but right. God has actually called me to this. It it got real to me, I would say, around my senior year in college. Wow. Yeah. You know, of, of course, you know, my son plays basketball in yes. college at Iowa State, and I played at South Carolina State. That's a good school. But what a lot of people don't know is I quit playing basketball after my junior year. Wow. I didn't play my senior year, mm. you know, in, in college. And... You know, after starting as a freshman in South Carolina State, 
you know, and then I had a couple of injuries, but they weren't injuries that I couldn't bounce back from. They mm-hmm. would just they would nag me from time to time. But after that junior year, come on, man, it was it was a it was a compulsion that I could not get away from. I couldn't I couldn't sleep. You know, wow. I couldn't. It, I would. I was always thinking about it. That God wants me to do more. He wants mm. me to be doing something else. And I, I'll never forget it. You know, all of us who've been truly called, we have a call narrative. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I'll never forget it. I was out partying with my friends. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, after my junior year uh, at South Carolina State, and you know, got home probably around about. 2, 2 a.m., I would say, and laid down, tried to go to bed, and I couldn't go to sleep for nothing. And something started mm. speaking to me saying, your boys need prayer. Wow. Your boys need prayer. That's, I just kept saying, your boys need prayer. Pray for your boys, like my mm. friends. Yes, yes. I got out of my bed, man, and I prayed like I never prayed before for about Jesus. an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah, just on my knees, just, on. just praying, man. Yes, praying sir. for every friend I could think of, you yeah, know, yeah. at that time. Yeah. And it was like from that night and then just from that night on, mm. I was never the same mentally. Come on. Come on. And and you know, and and it's not that I lost a passion or a love for basketball. Mm. I just found another purpose. I found Come another on. passion Come for on. something more. Listen. You see what I'm saying? Yes, and sir. that's when it became real for me. That God wants me to be doing just a little bit, mm. a little bit more, you know, with my life. Something that's going to last far beyond basketball, man. That is so powerful. Yeah. Because that, that got, initial real encounter, funny. that initial encounter. And he talked to me on my level. Listen. Your boys need prayer. Come on. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, pray for your boys. Yeah, you know, I never thought about know, it like people that. People think God talking King James. No, uh, man. He talked to me the way you can hear him. Yes. The way you yes. can understand him, That's man. it. Clean by Design is a full-service cleaning company specializing in floor care for commercial properties with dry times of 90 minutes or less. Our carpet service is perfect for your business, serving Sumter, Columbia, and the surrounding areas. Give us a call at 803-847-5595 or visit cleanbydesignsc.com for a free quote. With you being away at school, um, how has your faith helped you navigate this new norm, this especially during the 2, pandemic. 2,000 miles away, man. Yeah, during just, the pandemic. And then during the pandemic as well, yeah. I just think just me being the way I am, you know, I'm just chill. I just I make friends easy, you know. I, yeah. I like talking to people, so mm-hmm. it was easy going to Iowa and just being able to have that relationship with other people as well. And then my faith, uh, you know, I, I've always been faith. I always had that. I've always been optimistic. So, you know, with Come the on. pandemic and everything coming in, I'm like, there's going to be greater coming out of everything yeah. going on. Even with our season last year, we had a bad Come season. On. But I, I feel like this season, uh, we're going to make a, a big turnaround, the whole 360. Mm-hmm. So That's it. Yeah. And that he, he's developed something Come at on. 20 years old, and it probably was maybe a little before that, that I didn't develop till maybe I was in my late 30s. Wow. And it's that kind of like that that duck in a water mentality. Mm, come on. You know, where Talk about it. Nothing really bothers you so much to the point mm. where you get too low. Come on. Where you get so low where you can't bounce back. Yeah. And then nothing really excites you so much to the point where come you get on. too high where you can't come down. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's found a way to just be so level-headed, man. Wow, that's powerful. I'm, I'm finally there now. Yeah. But he's there at 20 where he mm. doesn't really worry about anything. Yeah, I have no worries. And that's, on, that's, that's, a, that's, no that's worries. a good place to be at, man. Listen, especially But as, it's faith that helps to get you there. Listen, yeah. only, only your it's faith. It's faith that helps to get you there. Because that's your, why I'm your so proud faith, of him. It frames your world. Yeah. You know, everything that God has blessed us to see in life yeah. is a result of our faith. Clean by Design is a full-service cleaning company serving Sumter, Columbia, and the surrounding areas. We specialize in sanitization, spraying, and cleaning, residential and commercial cleaning, and floor care. Give us a call at 803-847-5595 or visit cleanbydesignsc.com for a free quote. There's a young pastor out there that's trying to juggle being a spiritual leader, 
being the head of their home, mm -hmm. uh, being a father, you know, working and uh, trying to juggle life as well as ministry. What would you say to encourage them on their journey? Just look in the camera would, and just I share. would say priorities are so important. Mm -hmm. Knowing what's important, knowing what's urgent. There's a difference between what's urgent and what's important. Come on. Something that's urgent, it has to be done right away. Something that in, that's important, of course, it needs to be done, but you may be able to wait to get that done, but what's mm. urgent needs to be done right away. And so your priorities have to be in the proper place. And you've got to put family first. Come on, come on. You've got to put family first. Of course, our God goes first. Fa our, our faith is first, but you've got to put family after that. And I have to, I always make the distinction between God and church. Come now, on. This is for some pastor out there. I preach for God. I preach because I've been called by God to preach. My family knows, my children know that if I, if there's anything that they have going on and I'm not able to be there, it simply, it may simply be because I've got to preach for God. A meeting at your church? Come on. <laughs> let, them, let, let them know. A member at your church that might want you to come and see them or visit them or call them. Come on. They don't come before your children. Wow, that's powerful. They don't come before your family. Mm. Church and your God, that's that that's different. Mm. You might you, you've been called to preach. I'm Hallelujah. talking to pastors now, right? Come on. You've been called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. That is urgent. Yes, that sir. is of utmost importance. Yes. Now you may miss a you may miss a graduation. You may miss a game because you already had a, an engagement to preach the gospel. Mm. And they will understand that. Mm. But you can't miss because of a meeting. You can't miss because you got to tend to some, another member. You can't on, miss because on. of just some business going on at the church. You need to be there for your family, for your children. Mm. One thing our children, one thing our children, really two things they really want to know besides anything else. They understand you're not going to be perfect. They understand you're going to make some mistakes. Mm. They're going to stand, they understand that you may not be able to get everything that they want, but it's two things they want to know above all else. Oh, that man. is, do you care and are you there? Mm. That's oh. it, Pastor. That's it, pastors. Your children want to know, do you care and Hallelujah. are you there? Are you going to be there? And mm. do you really care? Come that's on. all they really want. That's what it all boils down to. Am I right about that, son? Correct. Are you going to be there <laughs> at the game, at the graduation, yes. at the program, at the at the ceremony, whatever? Mm. And do you really care? Are you showing that you really care? Mm. Are you talking to them? Are you communicating to you? Are you listening to them and want to know what they are dealing with, what they have going on? That's wow. the most important things. And so you've got to put God first, keep God first, but then make sure in, in, a, in, a, in a domestic sense, your family is most important. Then the church, then your friends, <laughs> then everything else. Let them else. know. That's huh? the truth. Then, that then, is the then, truth. Every, then everything else. That is the truth. That's what I tell you. Your, your priorities have to be in the right place. Listen, this has been an incredible time. I got to thank y'all so much no for coming to share. Because y'all, y'all my family. This ought to be John Lake and their family. Because <laughs> I promise you. My yeah. brother, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, And man. all that God has graced you to do and how you do it so effortlessly. You're anointed for this. And Bless it's so you, powerful. And Trey, I thank you, man. The future is so bright. Sure. I'm so proud of you. I just encourage you to keep your focus and That's always it. be the light, man. Know thank that you. we are standing on, we're standing cheering for you the entire way. Yes, sir. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. I'm telling you, I know <laughs> you are. Right. I know you yeah, are. man. So much further along than I was at 20. Look, at 20, the maturity and, and the people skills. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah, know, just yeah. you're a natural born leader, you know. And so just remember, you are destined for greatness. Appreciate it. Sure. Destined for greatness. Absolutely. Man, so much more to come right after this on John Lakin and Friends. Good morning, everybody. My name is Zion Lakin. I just wanted to ask y'all to go subscribe to my Uncle John's YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so y'all can get notified whenever a video is posted. And also, make sure you visit his website at www.johnlakin.com.
My name is Zion Lakin, and I'm here with John Lakin and friends. Indeed. Welcome to J.P. Holly Funeral Home and Crematory. We pride ourselves in assisting our community members during the greatest time of need for the last 100 plus years. In life, no two people are the same, so every funeral should be designed to help celebrate the uniqueness of one's life. That's where we at J.P. Holly Funeral Home come in. Our staff is committed to providing exceptional service and finding meaningful ways for your family to cherish the memories of your loved one. Today's show has been incredible. Thank you so much for watching. And right before we get out of here, I want to shout out a few of my folks. Karen Alexander, I love you. To my good people, Chris in India. And to Swagger Harrison and the Harrison crew. I love y'all so much. And I want to thank God for the Jackson family. Pastor Charles B. Jackson Sr., Charles B. Jackson Jr., and Trey Jackson. Thank you all so much for worshiping with us today. And listen, have a happy Sunday.